I want to thank you for the opportunity this morning to share about my COVID-19 related research. I'm going to be talking about my project, the Tech in Churches During COVID-19 Research Project. And this project really began for me in the early days of the pandemic. I've been studying the relationship between religious communities and how they appropriate, respond to, and negotiate with technology for over 25 years. And I was very interested in um, the early days of the pandemic in March 2020, where um, on my Facebook feed, um, it went from maybe a dozen church services being streamed on a Sunday morning to over 100 in just a matter of, of, of days after the pandemic was announced in the US. And so this, um, I began to look with interest at especially congregations who maybe would be described as technology resistant, how they were going through this process of not being able to meet face to face and seeing digital um, church, online church as the only alternative available to them. And maybe before that they'd been quite resistant to um, kind of digital technology, but now they had to become forced engagers with this media era. And it raised for me, um, what is the pandemic teaching us about churches' relationship to digital technology? And so over the early um, first several months of the pandemic, I spent a lot of time online on Sundays, watching church services and analyzing, looking for trends, and also kind of doing some consulting work um, unofficially for a lot of religious organizations that were struggling with this transition, this um, forced digital transition. Um, the result of that was in early 2020, um, I produced three eBooks for different audiences. Um, the Distance Church was a, a, a edited collection bringing together research scholars like myself to say, hey, this is what we've learned about doing church online that might be helpful to people just kind of getting started. Um, as well as we brought together a, a group of pastors um, to talk about their experiences in migrating online for the first time and what they were learning in the process. This book has been um, really popular. It's had over 25,000 downloads to date. Um, and it's kind of also kind of put, um, uh, uh, put a spotlight on my research in this area in many respects. Um, I also produced two follow-up books related to that, um, Religion in Quarantine, another ebook, and it's an edited book bringing together religious studies scholars to reflect on both how their research on religion was changing because of the pandemic, as well as how their own experiences in their own faith or spiritual communities and practices were changing because of, uh, of, the, of quarantine and lockdowns. And then digital ecclesiology um, is uh, bringing together scholars interested in the field of digital theology. So people who study the church, uh, people who um, study church liturgy or kind of pra um, worship practices, um, as well as theologians to reflect on what are some of the large issues that are kind of emerging or the challenges the church may face if online church becomes so prevalent um, and, and, and a long-term solution for many congregations. Um, again, this research grabbed a lot of people's attention um, from the World Council of Churches to the Vatican, and it also got, um, uh, put me on the radar of a sub, uh, several other research groups, one of which was the Center for Congregations um, in Indianapolis, Indiana. They are um, a group that is uh, a resource center for congregations, and they um, during the um, pandemic, they were able to offer a grant program to churches in Indiana, Indiana that um, needed help kind of buying digital equipment, digital technology, Zoom licenses to get online during the pandemic. Um, of the applications they received, um, they uh, were able to support over 2,700 congregations. Um, and this included Protestant and Catholic, as well as a few Jewish and Muslim congregations um, from a variety of de uh, denominations and you know, suburban, rural, um, urban settings as well. Because of this program um, and the, it was gathering a lot of data, um, interesting data from these groups and these uh, especially church and religious leaders that um, they felt and also their funder, the Lilly Endowment felt was worth kind of further exploring. So I was approached and asked to put a grant application in to consider studying this um, data. I did, and it was a successful. And so what this is what launched the Tech in Churches During COVID-19 project um, that's been funded by the Lilly Endowment for a two-year period. We get, began about a year ago, and we plan to go um, into um, a spring 2023 to finish up our research. And our project is um, a three-stage project working with both secondary data that's been gathered for us and data, new data that we'll be gathering. 
So stage one is focused on the narratives of leaders about the digital transition they went under uh, underwent. Um, and so this involves a thematic analysis of some focus groups um, with church leaders speaking about their experience. Stage two is a kind of, uh, I'm calling it before and after, the idea of church online. And this is a detailed content analysis of both the applications that um, churches put in, as well as their final reports where they had to first report, this is the technology we need, why we need it, and hopefully what we hope to do with it. And then what we actually did with it and what we learned about doing church online through this process. Um, and this is the, we're finishing up this stage of analysis right now and, and hoping to move into the um, kind of writing up our findings soon. And finally, stage uh, three, which we plan to begin late um, summer, uh, is looking at the future of the hybrid church. So more and more churches are kind of seeing that this investment in technology may be a long-term thing. And uh, so we plan to do kind of interviews with key um, church leaders and congregations, um, kind of that basically represent some of the, um, the typical or um, uh, responses um, or views of church and tech technology, its relationship that we get out of the first two stages of uh, research. So looking at some exemplars, as well as kind of what is the average church, what are they struggling with and succeeding with in technology. So because my time is uh, short, I'm just going to briefly touch on kind of some of the, the data that we have and so what are some of our findings that we're talking about and featuring um, from this project. So as I mentioned, stage one was a um, focus group oriented and involved 478 church leaders um, who met together in 50 different what we call tech talk sessions um, between uh, fall 2020 and spring 2021. Um, so half the session was dedicated to being um, a, a focus group on these five key questions. And the other half was kind of problem solving of tech challenges and issues um, that people could talk about. So my team um, gathered the data that was um, uh, from um, from these sessions and especially focusing on these questions of you know, who is making the technology decisions and what are they? What was the experience of shifting online like? What have been the challenges in moving online? What have been the successes? And are these digital shifts long-term or short-term? So from this data, this, this data and these kind of five questions, um, we um, have been able to come up with a lot of interesting observations. And those initially were um, uh, put out in our first report, which came out in November 2021, called When Pastors Put on the Tech Hat, How Churches Digitized During COVID-19. Um, and this idea of the tech hat was actually a phrase used by one of the, the um, uh, church leaders and when describing that you know, during the pandemic, they had to put on many new hats. But for him, the tech hat was the most challenging. And this was a, um, a idea echoed again and again by many church leaders saying of all the things that they felt unprepared for, uh, learning how to stream their services and, and move online and make technology decisions were the most difficult and the ones they felt most unprepared for. So from the 25 pages of kind of data and reflections that we share in this report, we were able to do th um, three tech tent trend papers. And these are basically deeper dives onto a specific issue or finding um, that was reported on here. So our first tech trend paper came out in December and it was called Needed But Lacking, Impacts of Pastors Technology Backgrounds During the Pandemic. And basically what the, that we found is that most um, pastors perceived that they lacked key technology skills as well as knowledge before the pandemic. And this definitely impacted kind of how they went online and what kind of the end product of what their online services looked like. And so really kind of showing and identifying some key areas where um, t uh, pastors need to be maybe more trained or informed and, and prepared to move on online with technology for the future. Uh, the second trend, tech trend paper, was embracing pastoral entrepreneurship during the pandemic. Traits needed to be an effective digital pastor. So as we analyze the kind of um, the transcripts in our notes and to identify what were the key traits that pastors described that they needed to be successful in moving their services online, um, they were um, uh, characteristics like adaptability, experimentation, creativity. Um, now these are traits not typically associated with uh, the role of a pastor that we see kind of traits like being a, 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 good, a good counselor, empathy, um, care, that kind of thing. But these were more traits that were um, identified with being an entrepreneur. And so many pastors kind of 
talked about this tension of saying being thrust in this new role and this even new identity of entrepreneurship and technological entrepreneurship. Um, and we looked at the challenges that posed and what that means for religious um, leaders and training in the future. And our final tech trend paper, which we hope to release soon, um, is um, we're calling the digital divide and digital reluctance in the pandemic church. And this um, uh, paper is looking at issues of kind of not just um, where, where many, especially small and rural churches um, were kind of behind the curve and lacked um, um, access to um, uh, uh, digital technologies, to in infrastructure, classic digital divide issues, but also a fourth interesting um, characteristic of the digital divide, which we're calling digital reluctance, where um, pastors and leaders had to kind of fight with congregations who, even after they moved online, were resistant to embrace or even engage in the digital context. So users versus non-users, as well as the technology haves and have-nots. So these are some of the themes that are coming out of our research and we're looking forward to seeing where things go. And just to kind of show you another dimension about the issues COVID raises for religious and um, uh, broader organizations and institutions in the US.